This is Conoclinium coelestinum, or mist flower. The coelestinum in that name is Latin for sky blue or heavenly. The heavenly? Sure, I'll get on board with that. The sky blue? I don't know. I know it's also called blue mist flower, but I just only ever see purple. Okay, well, <laughs> that's not the point of this video. The point is, uh, we're gonna look today at what mist flower looks like as a seedling coming up in the springtime. So not an established plant that has come up many years in a row, but the very first time that she comes up uh, from seed. And so I have the stats for mist flower up on the screen now, so we can be sure that we're talking about the same plant. Um, I have up there for the sun, full, partial, and shade. Most sources do not say that it will do well in shade, but I only grow it in shady locations, <laughs> and it does really well. So it's a bright shade, but shade no less. Um, ooh, right now on screen is what it looks like in the rain, which I think looks kind of cool. Anyways, um, I will also draw your attention to what the leaves look like. So they're triangle-ish. Uh, they're bluntly toothed along the edge, and then if you look at those leaves, you can really see the veins in there. Conspicuous network of veins <laughs> is what they say. So uh, knowing what those leaves look like will help us a little bit um, at knowing what, at understanding what the seedlings um, look like when they come up. So I have a video on what mist flower looks like coming up in the springtime when it's already an established plant. So I'll give you a link to that. This video is just what a seedling mist flower looks like. So here we are now. It is late spring. For me, that's early May. And I've got these two uh, milk jugs here, which is where I sprinkled their seeds uh, in December and then just left them outside. And here they are in late spring coming up. And so uh, in the upper left of one of these milk jugs is like a big, a big green plant. Ignore that, that's not it. But everything else in these jugs is the mist flower coming up. And so for some of them, you can see two little leaves. Those are, if you watch my videos, you know those are called cotyledons. Those are not true leaves. Uh, most plants, um, have cotyledons that look like that <laughs> so they're not very distinguishing um, but then some of these you can see have uh, two cotyledons and then two real leaves and so those are the first of our mature real mist flower leaves but at this stage <laughs> they don't look very distinguishing yet right they're so tiny um, they just look like tiny little green just tiny little green plants. So we can't tell, I think, much yet that this is mist flower versus anything else. And so at this stage, I was happily taking care of my mist flower seedlings because I was like, yeah, we're gonna put these out in the yard. You will see what happens with my mind though <laughs> over the course of this video. Okay, so next is, let me see, two weeks later. <clears throat> excuse me, two weeks later, so still late spring, but we're in more mid-May now, and some of these have two cotyledons and four true leaves. Uh, some even seem like they have more, and so they're starting to take shape and look like mist flower proper. Uh, maybe not this first little milk jug here, but the other one, they look a little bit bigger. And so again, the leaves are starting to take the slightly triangle-shaped that's loosely triangle shaped. Don't show this to a toddler and say, this is a triangle. <laughs> They'll be messed up for life. Um, I can't really see too much of the bluntly toothed edges on the leaves. It, that's not particularly conspicuous to me at this point. And I can start to see some of the veins in there, but it's not quite as busy and crazy as it will be when it's mature. So I can maybe on these slightly bigger ones, I can start to see that these are gonna be mist flower, but it still is tough at this point, to be honest. Okay, and so in our next clip, one, two, skip a few, we're at two months from when they started coming up. 
So you got to see the little seedlings and now you're looking at them in midsummer. for me, early July. So like, why did I leave them in that milk jug for two months? <laughs> I decided I wasn't going to put them in our yard because they can spread kind of quick. And I was like, well, I don't want to have like some kind of weedy problem that I can't control. So... I left them and was just like, forget it. And then here we are. I'm paying attention to them again uh, in midsummer because I realized, well, I'm already fighting the invasive garlic mustard. So why not replace the garlic mustard with these? uh, And we'll be doing better for pollinators. And so with these, you can see that two months since they first emerged, these are still considered seedlings. And uh, they're light green. Uh, They have the uh, wavy edges, the blunt toothed edges, if you will. Um, They are, you can see their triangle-ish shape is really there. And the veins are starting to look more like that conspicuous network of veins. You can see them in there now, making the top of the leaf look kind of bumpy and busy. Um, So yeah, here they are in midsummer. And so you got to know in the bottom of these milk jugs, the roots are probably not the happiest and they're probably all crammed in there. And mist flower has rhizome roots. Um, They're fibrous and rhizome. And so uh, it's probably very busy in there. So I have a video I'll give you a link to on what rhizome roots look like. There's also this other YouTube channel called A Wild Approach. I'll give you a link to one of her videos on mist flower because she uh, has a picture of mature mist flower pulled up and you can really see all the roots and it's it's very busy. So you got to know the roots in these milk jugs are busy and packed in. And although the leaves look happy, I bet the roots are like, uh, are we going to get out of this milk jug at some point? And so in my um, very well, good job of taking care of these plants, oh, I so mistreated the mist flower. Um, two, no, three, three weeks after this is when I finally got them in the ground. I know, I know, so mistreated. But it turns out they did not care. So here we are, midsummer, late July. Um, and these are maybe five or six inches tall. And I've just put them in the ground. Um, And so again, for seedlings, once also they're out of those milk jugs, you can really see now uh, they can get tall in their uh, first little seedling year, or taller than some plants will in their first year. They almost look a little leggy, although that could have to do with their being crammed in those milk jugs. Um, But now you can really see, oh, look at all those veins on top, right? Very busy. And the edges of those leaves, you can really see their... um, blunt tooths, little ridges on them. You can really see that very well now. Some of what you see planted here are the ones that are five or six inches tall. Some of them are only an inch or a half of half of an inch. And I find this with both the seedlings and the mature mist flower. As they come up, um, there's always some that are like a lot come up. <laughs> some of them do really well and get tall and some of them stay really short. So I take that as normal. Um, But yeah, these really, of course, now are quite looking like mist flower. So in this next video, just for funds, uh, it's about a month later yet again. So I mean, what is that from when you first saw these? May, June, July, August. Almost, almost. Like three and a half months from um, when they first started emerging. Uh, Here they are, and I just wanted to show you again so you can just see we're at late summer, mid-August, what they're looking like in their first year. I still call these seedlings, um, pretty much their whole first year I call them seedlings. Maybe that's not appropriate. Um, But you can see here that they have been establishing themselves. They're looking pretty good. And now if you haven't seen a lot of my videos, you're probably thinking, well, they kind of look good, but they're full of holes. Ugh. Be still my heart. I love seeing holes in leaves. It is telling me that insects and caterpillars are, they've already found my mist flower and they're using it. They're eating it to support their life, the life of their offspring. This is good. Mist flower has a number of caterpillars uh, that will eat their leaves. And that's great. Caterpillars aren't just there to eat our leaves. They make butterflies and moths. And I love seeing butterflies and moths. So... Uh, When I see the holes in my leaves, always pleased. 
Um, but again, here for these seedlings, you can see um, the triangle shape, the blunt toothed edges, and the conspicuous veins in there. So that's Coneclinium coelestinum, mist flower, uh, coming up as a seedling. Um, <clears throat> Oh, and here is that same first year. In their very first year, they stayed up long enough to bloom and get snow. How hardy is mist flower, even after I so grossly mistreated them? I love mist flower. I love it, which I say about pretty much every plant I look at. <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, they're all your favorite. Okay, <laughs> so that's mist flower coming up as a seedling. Again, if you want to know what an established mist flower looks like when that comes up in the spring, I have a video for that as well. So if you, my native plant lovers, <laughs> treat your mist flower seedlings better than me, uh, you might get more of them uh, filling out a space in that first year. But if not, if you treat them as poorly as I did, they still get established and come up year after year. The memory of how poorly you treated them becomes faint in the distance. <laughs> oh, plant native. <laughs>